Oh, hey. So today I'm with Chelsea from The Financial Diet, and mm. we're going to talk about money. All right. Why do you think that people don't typically like talking about money? Uh, because it's very boring, first of all, um, in a lot of ways. But also, I feel like a lot of people come at it with emotional baggage. Like, either they didn't have a lot of it, or they had a lot of it, or they had a really negative experience with it. And there's always some sort of emotion that feeds into money. It's never yeah. just about the money. Or, like, judgment. 100%. Yeah. And also, I need to go on record and say that your channel is one of my favorite channels on the entire YouTube, so Thanks. you should go subscribe. It's like, one of my favorite channels on YouTube as well. <laughs> so we asked on Twitter for some questions and we're going to <laughs> dive right in. From the infamous dynamic dancing dollettes. Is and, that their name? Yes, legally. And it says, how do you learn to save money if you're not very good at it or have never been able to? So there's really two big strategies that are essential to saving money. Number one is automate your savings. Like even if you're getting $10 a week, make sure that your bank account is automatically moving one of those dollars into savings because it is extremely difficult once your brain has already mentally process that money and thinks that you have it to then go into your account and take that money out again. Yeah. So do that for sure, first of all. I love forgetting that I have money. That there is nothing better than being pleasantly surprised by your bank account instead of just devastated by Heck it. Heck yeah. And then the other thing I would say is one of my favorite tips with money is to every month go through your bank statement, take a highlighter or a pen or whatever and highlight or underline every purchase that you do not remember making because that will give you an automatic list of things not to spend on again. Mm, mostly because food for me. That's yeah. my number one. I feel like <laughs> what I spend money on is food. Every single time we talk to someone for you for the financial diet, their number one thing that they like regret spending money on or spend too much on is food, which is, is so good. It is so good, but I feel like <laughs> there's a huge difference between like a meal that you're really looking forward to and that you really enjoy and just like getting Thai food seamless to you for the third time in a week. Yeah, I feel like Postmates is definitely a problem. Like not for me, but just generally for people like wasting money on that delivery fee. I've never used Postmates, but in New York, I feel like people are so hedonistic with it. Like I know like people will tweet on my feed. They'll be like, uh, so hungover getting one ice cold red Gatorade Postmate into my house. And I'm like, this is disgusting. No, please just walk to the store, especially in New York. Yeah, it's like what, 30 feet your away? Place and go get it. Oh my gosh. I, yeah, actually that's one individual person who tweeted that exact thing today. So hopefully she doesn't watch this, but <laughs> it is just like, it's one of those things where you see that level of excess around you that's so normalized on yeah. social media. And you're like, we're a disgusting generation. <laughs> like boomers are right about us. Cause it's become so convenient. Like everything is all about convenience. It's a hundred, well, and that's most of what you're paying for with food yeah. is the convenience and not having to cook. Mm -hmm. You know, one financial thing that I really hate and have hated since I don't when I, the first time I saw it was the first time I bought concert tickets um, is a convenience fee for buying like tickets online. online. Yeah. Why? Where, where else are you supposed to buy them? Yeah, I mean, you just go to the venue and you're like, one, please. <laughs> I'm actually, I feel very hashtag blessed in that I don't really like concerts very much and I hate music festivals because mm -hmm. they are way more expensive than I thought they would be. Like every time I've gone to a music festival, it's been hundreds and hundreds of dollars, plus the logistics of getting there, plus camping, plus it's like $10 for a bottle of water. Oh, yeah, I mean, I would love to have the experience like once, but I also feel like I would be fighting misery. I feel like honestly, as a man, you're already way better off. Just because as a woman, music festivals are just really rough on the dignity, both from like a hygiene bathroom perspective <laughs> and also like just getting sexually harassed as a yeah. norm. Like I was at a music festival once and this guy like came into our tent, like he was very drunk. So we just like came into the tent thinking it was his tent. And I was like, please get out. And he just like reached over and just grazed my leg and then left. <laughs> and, what? and one of my tent mates was like, he's probably rolling. And I was like, how yeah. is this such a normal like scenario? Yeah. This is disgusting. Does that make it better? 
There was this woman, like female journalist, who wrote a story for some magazine, like reporting on sexual harassments at music festivals, and she got harassed 18 times while reporting the story. <laughs> what is wrong with people? <laughs> oh my God. Music festivals are bad. That's my hot take. I have a question that pertains to infamous dynamic dancing dollets question, um, which is, what do you think about apps like um, Capital or Acorns or anything that, you know, like you were saying, automatically withdraws money? We were just at Acorns HQ today talking to them. Um, oh. So I've, we've never worked with Acorns, but we've mentioned them quite a lot on the channel. I use both and I love them personally. I think they're great in the sense that like, for so many people, the biggest barrier to investment, which everyone needs to be doing at least for a retirement account, the biggest barrier is feeling like you don't have enough money to do it or that you can't find the money to do it. And with a lot of the traditional investment <clears throat> options, that's true. They have fairly high minimums. And with something like Acorns, you can start for literally $5 and it can be a very passive thing. Like they'll round up the dollar that you're spending and put the change into your account or they have like partnerships with stores and things like that that will you know give you money back so I think just like with the automating thing anytime that you can make these good financial decisions something that you don't have to think about you're way better off and like even if you start with acorns and then eventually open up you know an account with a different place when you're more um, you know you have more money to work with more stable whatever like the whole point is just getting started that's 90% of the difficulty yeah. what was like the first good financial decision that you made. So I ruined my credit when I was 18 and um, a huge part of it was from a defaulted credit card, which had, um, like it was initially a $500 card, but from all of like the interest and collections and stuff, it ended up being um, like a little over $2,000 and I was just putting it off forever and it was just destroying my credit. And I think by the time I dealt with it, my credit score was like 460, mm. which is a, almost literally as low as a credit score, score can be. Um, but so I, I paid off my um, credit card debt in just like a few, like I negotiated with the collector to get it reduced down by paying it in like two chunks basically. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the first time that I'd ever <clears throat> done something financially that was good for me, but didn't give me that rush of immediate satisfaction of buying something but it made me feel good in a different way, mm -hmm. which was the first time I understood that like being responsible or having money in an account or paying something off could feel good in its way and be worth spending on. And that was a huge moment for me. Yeah, I think probably the, the difference is like when you buy something, you get a rush um, immediately, but then like there's always some guilt that it's comes like a with down. it. Yeah, even um, yesterday, I bought a cologne that was like $100, and I'm like, why did I do that? I mean, I wanted it, but why did I do that? <laughs> Someone said that there's like, there's three things. It's, can we be a little dirty? Eating fast food, watching porn, and impulse spending, all three are like in the moment, you're like, hell yeah, and then right after you're like, get this away from me. Like, who was I? <laughs> like, that's this, amazing, that's so that's accurate. Disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> the next question comes from Troy R. And it says, what are some strategies to start a child with an allowance? Pay per chore, flat weekly rate. Our kid seems to be willing to help with anything for a price and it doesn't seem like that's a great way to start. <laughs> Exploit that labor. Um, <laughs> so it's interesting, obviously, well, not maybe not obviously, but I don't have any children. Mm -hmm. um, and Same. no plans for now, so. I mean, uh, I have a fur child, but same. he Dog. can't do chores, so. Dog? Yeah. I'm obviously not qualified in terms of being a parent. However, I will say that I was raised as a child that you do not get money for doing chores. That is you paying rent to live in this house and eat this food and go to school and all of that stuff. Like yeah. you're just a member of the household. My mom would always be like, I don't get paid for cleaning. Like, what the hell, we live here. <laughs> um, but uh, my parents were very, very big on from the age that I could having little jobs. Like when I was, uh, you know, starting with like 12, I would just like babysit kids in the neighborhood, like 12, 13, just like for a couple hours. I would, you know, cut other people's grass. I would do newspapers. I like from the time I was 14, I had like a part-time job at different stores and so on and so forth. And my parents always made me save 80% of that. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, so I graduated. It's funny because I like, I turned 18 and I had like, I want to say like $13,000 in the bank and I spent it all in like two months. <laughs> it's horrible and it's like I 100% blame, like it's entirely me who ruined that. But mm -hmm. I think, but my sister did the opposite. She did not do that with the money and so I think that with a child who's not 
horrible. Like that's a really, really good move. Um, and as far as before that, I think the best thing to do if you really do want to teach them money strategies is to perhaps find them tasks that are outside of their day-to-day -day chores that are a little bit more special or advanced and then pay them a little tiny fee for that and then they can budget that money accordingly. But I don't think it's a really good precedent to either give the child free money and or be like, if you clean your room, you get $5. Like that's yeah. horrible. That's just like bribing your child to be a, a decent human being. Yeah, I, I never got uh, an allowance. Like we were given lunch money for, you know, every day for school. So like $2 or whatever it was back in the 1700s when I was in high school. But like we never got money for doing things, like for doing chores or anything. Well, and also presumably you spent your lunch money on lunch. Yes. And then, you know, some days I would have to ask for an extra dollar because I wanted a slushy because that was very important in high school. Right. Yeah. You weren't like, I had a friend in high school who did the dark thing, which was that she never ate lunch. Like she just like. She did the dark thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. So many people just got fries. Like, yes. and like, you know, like you're trying to be healthy. Fries for lunch is not healthy. It's vegan though. It is vegan. It's vegan. But I remember by the end of one year, like she kept it all in like a like a pencil case in mm -hmm. her like locker. And I just remember she opened it up at the end of the year and there were like hundreds of dollars in there. And wow. we were all like crowded around. We were like, oh, this is incredible. And then all of us were like the next semester, the next year we were like, we're all going to do the same. And we'll have hundreds of dollars. And we made it like three days. We were like, fuck this, we're going to eat lunch. I think that's a good strategy if you like bring a free thing from home to eat. Right. Like she yeah. could have, like that's what made me suspect that it was more about just not eating the lunch. But yeah. She made money in the process. Right. Was your school one of the schools where rarely anyone brought lunch? We moved from like the south to we moved to like um, a very, very rich town. We were not rich. We were like one of the poors of the town. We were like mm -hmm. middle class-ish, but like we were definitely poor by the town standards. Yeah. Um, so like a lot of the kids at school, like all of the rich kids brought really, really fancy lunches. So if you got, if you bought lunch at school, like they were like, do you know what's in that? And yeah. I'd be like, yes, <laughs> It's I'm so disgusting. funny because like it, it goes like either way. Like I thought, because from my experience, um, everyone pretty much bought lunch at my school. So I thought it was like that at every high school. When I met the first person whose school was mostly bringing their own lunch, I was like, people do that? <laughs> you bring food into school and keep it somewhere? What? Like that was such a foreign, <laughs> yeah, yeah. such a foreign concept to me. Leave a comment, which type of high school did you go to? <laughs> and it's funny too, because I, I also remember coveting so badly from, because my mom was one of those people, like she cooked every night and was everything was kind of from scratch and a little old world in that way and like I looking back that's great obviously but at the time I was like my kingdom for some wonder bread and like kool-aid and chips like we weren't allowed to have any of that stuff we couldn't have soda so it was like when I would go to my friends houses they would have like all of the like things to pack lunches with like mm -hmm. they would have like the mini assorted bags of chips and I used to steal, <laughs> I wow. steal like 12 bags Chelsea's a scammer <laughs> I totally scammed <laughs> Kimball Musk's Tesla says, what are your top three favorite slash easiest ways to save money? For example, money withdrawals, like you said, investing, et cetera. Is there anything other than automatic withdrawals? Saving money. So I have done at various times in my life, all cash diets which really helped me because, and this is psychologically proven, spending with cards, your brain doesn't perceive it as spending. Like it's, it just doesn't feel real. 100% yes. Well, if you're like that at all, you should try an all cash diet for a month mm -hmm. where you just give yourself an allowance essentially. And when you have, and you leave your cards at home. And so when you have no more dollars, you have no more dollars. And like, obviously, you can set up things for an emergency, like you'll have apps on your phone and stuff, but like you really sort of have to limit yourself in that way. And it's interesting how painful it feels putting every dollar out on the counter. Yeah, I was just in the Philippines and I used cash everywhere. So I withdrew money from the ATM, which there's like a $5 fee for a non my bank ATM and then also a $5 fee for the foreign exchange. But like, I feel like I could keep track of how much I was spending because it was all cash. So mm. that was like 
It's such an eye-opening thing because I never use cash here. Was it radically more affordable? Oh, yes. Um, living in LA, we're like one of the most expensive cities, um, I don't know, in the world, but in the country. Um, going to the Philippines where it's 52 pesos for $1. Like a fruit shake or like a juice here or in New York would be like 10, like eight or nine dollars maybe. Sadly, yes, that's accurate. Yeah, so like in the Philippines, um, I could get the same like fresh squeezed juice or fruit shake, which is one of my favorite things, which is why I'm bringing it up. Um, it was like 60 pesos, so like a dollar-ish. You know, yeah, it's, it, but the funny thing about it though is that like obviously even the most affordable cities in America or in Europe are still by those standards fairly pricey, but like you go out of even like not even just metropolitan areas, but even areas just like DC, LA, Chicago, New York, and shit is so affordable comparatively. Like you go to bars, like we were uh, in Montana actually, uh, filming uh, with our channel directors behind the camera right now. Actually. Wearing a Britney shirt. Wearing a Britney Iconic. shirt. But so we were there and, and uh, my uh, partner at TFD, Lauren and I were, um, we were just going around to different places with the team and like, you know, getting drinks and stuff. And like, we were at this bar and the special that night was like $2 for like a can of beer and a shot and like $1 for, you know, some mixed drink or whatever. And we were like, skews? Like, <laughs> this is like, how, and we actually asked ourselves, we were like, how is everyone not permanently wasted here? Like, you can, you can get wasted for $5 in the city. Like, in New York, like, they're Oh, New York is even worse than LA. It's unbelievable. Cocktails are often literally like $17. Disgusting. And you're like, I guess I'll have my one cocktail for this weekend. <laughs> uh, a couple of us rented, like, all five of us gals went in on um, a, renting a cabana at a pool here in LA. Because we were like, why not? It's like, the, we've never done mm. it before. And it was actually surprising affordable for all that you get um, but so we were there and we had a very serious discussion the night before and we're like listen girls these cocktails are $15 like how are we gonna sneak in some airplane bottles and like we like made like a bootleg sangria before we left and stuff because it's just like I as much as I don't mind spending on really good food spending money on alcohol at bars especially just fucking kills me yeah it hurts it, it hurts yeah because it's so like it's for what, mm -hmm. you know? If I want to responsibly drink, <laughs> I if I want to get drunk, like I'm gonna pregame at home. Like for I'm sure. gonna I'm gonna use the liquor that I have at home and then Uber to the place that I'm gonna go to. A hundred percent. Like I'm very big. Like I love cooking, and I'm also very big on um, doing dinner parties, potlucks, like drinks nights at home. And it's. I mean, I enjoy it. Like I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. But it's primarily because it's so much more affordable, and you can make yeah. really nice things. Like you can make really fancy cocktails and and cheese boards and charcuterie, and it's like a fraction of the price of going yeah. out. And then the last question is from uh, Andrea Martinez and it says, what are some good ways to make money as a full-time student? First of all, I, child care. I did nannying, babysitting, au pairing, every variant of that that you could possibly do for several years just because it's so adaptable to doing homework and stuff. Like anytime the kids go to bed, they're down for a nap, whatever, like you can do that work. Plus often you can eat there, which is nice because you're broke at the time. So that's very good. I, when, I was in a, when I was in au pair, it actually enabled me to live abroad and have my own little apartment that was paid for and go to school. And like, I never ever would have been able to do that without that job. Um, another thing that I used to do quite a lot was tutoring. Uh, so a fun fact is that if you are a native English speaker, there are enormous opportunities to tutor English to people. You can do it over Skype, you can do it in person. Like I happen to be living in France, so I would tutor English to French clients, but French is my second language, so when I was in uh, Maryland and DC going to school, I would tutor French to American clients. So like if you have any skill like that, and even just being a native English speaker is a huge one. Like tutoring yeah. is great. I, w I remember when I was tutoring, um, both ways I made somewhere between 25 and $30 an hour, which was fucking insane to me at the time. I was like, I mean, it's still a lot of money, yeah. but like at the time, especially like compared to the other jobs I could get. I mean, I suppose like bartender, bartending and waitering is like fairly on par with that, mm -hmm. but like for the amount of like, you can do it from your home, which yeah. is huge. And then the last thing that I would say is a really, really good one is um, doing any kind of 
like, and this is not necessarily a way to make money, but it's a huge money saver, is organizing with friends to do, um, and you can make money doing this, is organizing with friends to do Airbnb shares, which is basically like you form a co-op. Like mm -hmm. um, you have, let's say, two, let's say it's just you and a friend. Like you agree, okay, we're gonna do an Airbnb co-op where one week a month or however many days a month, you go stay with the other person while you rent out your room. Wow, and that's a really good idea that I have, that has never crossed my mind. <laughs> it is so cool because if you live in a city that people are visiting, like you can make just like an extra grand a month doing it. You can pay your own rent doing that just by like going to have like a sleepover with your friend for a few days a week. That's amazing. Yeah. That, that's like blowing my mind that yeah. I've never even thought about that concept. It's also check with your landlord <laughs> to make sure that it's legal. And that's all the time we have for today. Um, I'm so glad that you came here on my channel and are just spreading your wisdom to me and all of you guys watching. I'm so glad to be here. Also, it's very special to us because we're a fairly new channel and up until recently we were very, very small and like Nicola knew about us when we were teeny tiny. And it was like the man with the viral videos and it was <laughs> us, it was so exciting. And anyway, it was a big fangirl moment when we first met. Well, so. go watch our video um, yeah. that we did on, on their channel Come and see. subscribe, because you should. Subscribe. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye. Pieces.